Okay. Yeah, just uh, just a few more weeks. So today we cover chapter nine. Next week, uh, bits of chapter twelve. The week after, review, and then the week after that will be the final exam. Okay. So. Okay, so today we cover, so chapter nine is all about statistical inference. of populations. What did he what did we cover last week? Okay, hypothesis tests, yes. Uh, but well, so statistical inference covers the uh, concepts of hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Okay? So last week we covered hypothesis tests, that's correct, but it was not for means of populations, it was for Proportions, proportions, okay? So um, last week, we covered for population proportions. Okay, and so uh, I just want to give you a very quick overview of what we will cover today, okay? Okay, and today we will cover confidence intervals. For... Um, means of for populations, okay? And this will have for one sample. And then we will also cover confidence interval for means of populations, <coughs> but for two samples. And then uh, we will cover hypothesis tests. Means with one sample. And hypothesis tests for means of populations with Two samples. So today we are covering four things, and it might feel like a lot, but it's also not, because the concepts behind confidence intervals are the same as they are when we did confidence intervals for population proportions, right? So. In chapter 7, we did co confidence intervals for population proportions. So the same concept and line of thinking holds in confidence intervals for means of populations. And then last week, we did hypothesis tests for population proportions. And the same line of thinking applies here. Okay? The only things that change are all of the formulas. The formulas change. Okay, and so we'll cover that. And instead of the Z table, we use the T table. And now I'll, I'll cover that as well. Okay. So, um, so fear not. All of the 
thinking and reasoning that you have learned for confidence intervals. and hypothesis tests still apply. Okay. The formulas have changed because we are using have changed. Okay. We are doing inference for means. Okay. And here's the other very key thing is that um, always use the T table or inference or means. Okay, so today we're covering inference for means and that means we will always use the T table. Okay? And I, I guess I can always I can al also write always use the Z table. for proportions. Okay, so last week we dealt with proportions and we used the Z table quite a bit. This week we will use the T table because everything we're covering today deals with means. And so what I'm going to do to cover these topics of confidence intervals for means and of populations and things like that, I'm first going to cover confidence intervals for proportions, which you have already learned and should be familiar with. And then I'm going to show how it's the parallel line of thinking for, uh, for means. Okay. So. Um, here, here's another uh, another very important item is that if the problem or research question uh, rev is about a numeric variable, you will be dealing with means. Okay. Proportions apply when we have categorical variables. Okay, things like was there uh, was there uh, congenital abnormalities? In that case, either the uh, someone has congenital abnormalities, or that person does not. That's a categorical variable. Okay, when you're dealing with means, you're dealing with something like height or weight or uh, something else. Okay, then you can talk about the average weight of a sample or the average height of a sample, things like that. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with a numeric variable, you're going to be dealing with means. Okay, so let's uh, let's cover confidence intervals. Okay, so first we're going to start with a review of confidence intervals for 
population proportion P. Okay. And we would say, you know, to make a confidence interval, the upper and lower bounds are determined by, and in the middle of the confidence interval we put p hat, and then we have plus or minus z star times p hat times 1 minus p hat over n square root. This looks familiar, I'm hoping. <coughs> okay, so let's label all of these things. So this, in the center, this is our estimate of p, right? Our center, we put in the estimate of p, OK? And this is a critical value. And I gave you four values to memorize, right, for z star? Okay, and this quantity, this is known as what? The standard error, okay? And, but if you take z times the standard error, that is the margin of error, okay? Z star times the margin of error, OK? OK, and then we say something like we are blank percent confident that the population proportion P is between blank, which is the lower bound, and blank, the upper bound, right? You guys are quiet, but uh, I'm hoping this is all familiar and comfortable with you guys. Yes? Is that the positive sign that would be? I'm sorry? Is it a positive sign, that little mark that would be? Oh, it's a, it's a Z star, Z oh. star, right? Uh, our critical value Z star times the standard error. OK, so let's talk about a confidence interval for the population. Now we're dealing with means. So now, so this is the new thing. We're going to make a confidence interval for the population mean. And what is the symbol that we use for the population mean? Not x bar, that's the sample mean. x bar is the sample mean. The population mean is mu. I think I heard someone say that. Okay, 
and that looks like this, right? So confidence interval for the population mean mu, okay? So the upper and lower bounds Okay, the upper and lower bounds are determined by, okay, so in the center, instead of p hat, because p hat is an estimate of the population proportion p, what is my estimate of the population mean mu based on a sample? Right, so the idea is we, the population is too big for us to study directly, right? And we, but we want to know what the mean of the population is. It's too big, so I take a sample. What am I going to do to the sample to kind of estimate how big the population mean is? Mean of the sample, okay. So the estimate of mu is going to be what? The mean of the sample, which is? x bar, okay? And then I'm going to do plus or minus, and I said z, you always use z for the population proportion, for proportions, and instead for means you always use what? t, right? So we're going to have x bar plus or minus t star, and then I'm going to just put this quantity, but what do you think this quantity is called? S over the squared of n. This is called the, this is the standard error, okay? So in the center, we have the estimate of mu plus or minus t star, our critical value. And here, this is our standard error. Can we see the parallels between a confidence interval for proportions and a confidence interval for means? Okay. And so, okay, so let's try an example using actual, <coughs> actual numbers. Well, let's also just make sure, what is x bar? x bar is our, what does x bar represent? Sample mean, t star is our critical value. S, what does s represent? Uh, not the sample. I heard somebody else say it. S represents the standard, uh, deviation. standard deviation. Sample standard deviation. And N, what is N? Sample. The sample size. All right, is this okay? So far, so good? Okay, so let's try an example out. Does everybody have this all written down? No, no, okay. Thank, thank you for that emphatic uh, but silent response. So that's good. I can...
We're good. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to try an example here. Okay, so we want to. Um, We want to estimate the average battery life of a, uh, I don't know, of the, I don't know, iPhone 53, okay? We'll say iPhone, iPhone 12, okay, 12S. <laughs> All right, so let's say we have um, we have a random sample of fifteen um, iPhones to test. Okay, and. Uh, we use them under heavy load and measure how long the phone lasts, okay? All right, and to, uh, to keep things consistent, we try to, you know, mimic the same type of use. So maybe we all have them run movies and stream movies on YouTube or something. Something intense, right? Or do GPS navigation or something. That always seems to eat up battery life, right? So, okay, so, you know, just for consistency, do the same heavy task, right? On all phones. Okay, so uh, what what is uh, so, you know, how many measurements are we going to get? Right. Okay, so we have fifteen measurements, but rather than looking at all fifteen of them, we're going to just look at. Okay, um, the average of those fifteen. What will it be? The average of the 15 measurements is, so iPhone 12S, how long can it do GPS navigation and stream YouTube videos together? Maybe uh, 8.64 hours? Huh? Is that optimistic? Yes. Well, this is the 5th, 12th, 20th generation, right? iPhone 12S. They've, Maximize battery life, okay? And uh, and the standard deviation of these measurements is what? I don't know, maybe it's uh, 15 minutes, so 0.25, one quarter of an hour. Is that okay? All right, so now we want to make, uh, so let's make a 95% confidence interval for the average battery life of all iPhones, okay? All iPhones, what, you know, running GPS, and streaming video. Over cellular. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's go through and identify each of these values, okay? So we're going to need x bar, t star, s and n. Okay, so x bar is what? Deviation. 
8.64, T star will come from the table. And I'll explain how to get use the table in a moment. S is 0.25 and N is 15. Good. Okay. All right, so let's let's talk about getting T star from the table, okay? So to get T star from the table, we use something called degrees of freedom. Which is known as df, and this is equal to n minus 1. So how many D df do I have? 14. Okay. And what level confidence do I want? I want a 95% confidence interval, right? So that will come into play in selecting T, t star. <coughs> Are we OK? OK, so what we do is we go to our T table, and we look up 14 degrees of freedom. And at the top, you see the different column headings. We see 95%. And we go to 14 degrees of freedom. So what is the T star I use? 2.145, right? Are there any questions? Can you show that again, Professor? Yeah. So, so uh, you're okay with degrees of freedom being 14, right? Yes. Okay. And it says I want to make a 95% confidence interval. Right. So I go to my table and I go to the column that says confidence level 95%, and I go down to the row where DF says 14. Okay. And then, uh, and then I have 2.145. So I want a 95% confidence interval. So I, I pick the column that says 95%. And then my degrees of freedom is 14, n minus 1. I've got 15 in my sample. 15 minus 1 is 14. So I go to the row that says df over here says 14. So I go to that row. And the number I pick is 2.145. OK? All right, so now uh, now we're just going to plug in our values into our formula, x bar plus or minus t star times s over the square root of n. So I get 8.64 plus or minus 2.145 times 0.25 divided by the square root of 15. <coughs> okay, so I do the math here, and uh, here I'll, I'll show you. I do 2.145 times 0 0.25 divided by uh, the square root of 15. Close off the parentheses, and I get 0 0.138. Okay. So 8.64, so my upper and lower bounds, or my high and my low, the upper bound is 8.64 plus 0 0.138. 8.778, and then I do the same thing minus, and I get 8.502. Okay, and so I would say I am 95% confident. that the average battery life
of all iPhone 12s's <laughs> under heavy load. is between 8.502 hours and 8.778 hours. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, which which calculation? The margin of error. Okay. So yeah. So my margin of error. If if somebody asks what is the margin of error, that is point zero point one three eight, right? Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm doing just just this stuff. Two point one four five. Two point one four five times. And on the numerator, I have 0 0.25. And on the denominator, I'm going to hit divide by the square root of 15. Now, my calculator inserts a parentheses there automatically. So I, I close it off, and then I hit equal. OK? Yeah, Mason. So we don't get uh, one exact number. We just sort of get a range. Yeah, just like when we did confidence <coughs> intervals for p, you also got a range, right? It was p hat plus this and p hat minus that. So you had an upper and a lower bound for your confidence interval. Okay. So same ideas here. And we say I'm 95% confident that the average battery life of all iPhone 12s under heavy load is between this and this. Okay. Yes. So is it safe to use all? Huh? Yeah, uh, that's, that's the point of the confidence interval is we've taken a random sample of 15 phones, and based on that, we're making a statement about all phones, okay? That's the point of statistics, right? Uh, we want to make a conclusion about the population based on limited data. <coughs> and so, you know, if we follow the rules and all of all of that, we, we are able to do that. So if we have a random sample, okay, and the sample is not too big or not too small, we can make these statements. Yeah? So I did 8.64 plus 0 0.138. 8.64 plus 0 0.138 is equal to 8.778. 8.64 minus 0 0.138 is equal to our lower bound, 8.502. OK. So far, so good? OK. Now let's just make sure. I'm going to just copy this onto the next page. Shoot. OK. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, you mean right here and right yeah. here? Yeah. Uh, you, you, we could put parentheses there, but they're not necessary because of the order of operations, right? Okay. Order of operations says multiplication always comes before addition and subtraction. So because there's a multiplication sign here, it's implied that we're going to do this stuff first and then do the plus or minus, OK? But yes, you're right. I could put parentheses here and here, and that, that's fine. So I was just asking, that's where, yeah. the, but that's where the actual Yeah, but that's where I'm getting my margin of error, OK? But it, it's, not, it's not wrong to do that, uh, but it's not necessary just because um, order of operations says that's how we do it. OK, so we, we came to this conclusion. So let me, uh, based on this, let me ask you a question. Do we have evidence that the average uh, battery life of all 
iPhone 6s or iPhone uh, 12 S's or whatever we are. Do we have average evidence that the average battery life of all phones in the population is less than nine hours? Based on our confidence interval, right? What's our answer? Yes. 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 Okay. And how do we? And why is the answer yes? <coughs> yeah, because our entire range nine is not within our range, and the entire range is lower than nine hours. Okay. So there's. We'd say nine is not within the interval. Okay, and the entire interval. is lower than nine hours, OK? What if I ask the exact same question but this time we ask, uh, is it is less than um, 8.75 hours? Do we have evidence that the average battery life of all iPhone 12 S's is less than, you know, eight and three quarter hours? No. And the answer there is no. Okay. And the answer is no because what? It's just yeah, because 8.75 is within the inter interval, right? So, no, 8.75. Is within the interval. Okay, so we will not have evidence that the average battery life of all phones, of all iPhone 12s, is less than 8.75 hours. How's that? We're good? OK. And so I'm hoping you see that this is not vastly different from what we did two weeks ago in Chapter 7, right? when we talked about confidence intervals for the population proportion P. We're feeling OK there? All right. Um, debating. Let's go ahead and take our break now, and then we'll uh, we'll come back after the break, and we'll cover the other three topics. I said.